Have you ever wondered why nobody seems to write their own OS and we all use Windows, OS X or Linux? Well, hopefully this video can give you a bit of an idea about that. Uh, I've included all of my sources in the links in the description, so if you want to check any of them out, feel free to do so, but let's get into it. So first of all, I want to clarify what an operating system is. It's something that we all use on a daily basis, but for the most part, many people don't really know what it is. An operating system is essentially just a level of software that interfaces between your hardware, the actual you know components in your PC, or whatever else and the programs that you want to run whether that's you know your Adobe suite for editing videos or your you know Unreal Engine 4 games or whatever else um, all of those programs go through the operating system and are effectively translated to then work with the processor that you have. Operating systems are typically comprised of a kernel and a shell the kernel being the core of the operating system the main functions that it, it requires to be you know run itself, uh, including things like the bootloader and all that sort of stuff. And then you have the shell, which is basically everything that you see, all of the extra features, all of the extra kind of bells and whistles, uh, and everything that you touch on the operating system is generally the shell. Both Linux and Max OS X are originally based on the Unix operating system, which is a fairly famous operating system and architecture for, well, operating systems, and is uh, was actually made by Bell Laboratories from a TNT in the 60s and 70s, so certainly an older design, but uh, still a, um, an impressive architecture that has lasted to this day. I would mention though that OS X has since kind of broken away from the, its Unix backbone to a very different style of microkernel as opposed to Linux's monolithic kernel, but we'll talk about that in a second. And on the Windows side of things, it's basically always been from DOS or MS DOS as you likely knew it if you are probably about 30 or older. Um, that was the that's still the core although I believe they're rewriting a lot for th uh, their Windows NT kernel instead and and therefore uh, using that in Windows 10 which is a little bit lighter faster that kind of stuff so um, that's kind of where they're at but Windows is a proprietary operating system so what goes into the kernel there is closed source and only people at Microsoft or people who have decompiled the kernel uh, know what is in it. Now if you wanted to write your own operating system the first thing you need to do is write your own kernel. Now there is a GitHub tutorial in the description. If you want to follow along and write your own operating system, then feel free. But bear in mind that you will need to know both assembly language and C in its kind of basic form at very least to be able to write anything in that. Uh, the most basic of kernels will be written in assembly, but then you can do extra stuff with C as well. And if you want to take a look at the source code for the Linux kernel, then you can also take a look at that in the description down below as well. But that's, uh, that's uh, hundreds of thousands of lines of code. Now, as I mentioned, the other part of the operating system, apart from the kernel, is the shell. As I said, that's the thing that you actually interact with. It can be, uh, there's a number of different types of shells, so you can have a command line interface, or CLI, which is basically, if you ever open up command prompt, or, you know, the Linux terminal, uh, effectively, that is your entire, you know, interface, that's your entire shell there, um, and that is a command line interface, and then you have a GUI, or graphical user interface, which is what we're, you're kind of using used to, you know, things with windows that you can drag around and displays and uh, applications you can click on and that sort of stuff. Uh, all of that is from a graphical user interface and the two can be kind of intermingled. You can have, as we know from, you know, the Linux terminal in a window, you can have a command line interface in a GUI shell, but um, overall there are a number of different types of shells, especially for Linux where you have the GNOME shell and a number of other options that different distributions like to use. Now, once again, if you would like to learn how to write your your own shell in C. There is a link from someone much smarter than me to a tutorial where you can take a look at that and write your own if you fancy, but you would likely need a pretty, you know, kind of in-depth knowledge of at very least C in general to be able to write that. And if you want to do anything more than just a basic command line interface to type a few things out, then you would need thousands of lines of code. I mean, you can take a look at the GNOME shells source code in the links in the description as well if you want to just take a look at that one. Um, it's kind of crazy and uh, yeah a bit uh, a bit in depth. And the other thing to mention here is that if you do write your own operating system you're likely going to need to write most of your own programs to run on that operating system or at very least recompile existing programs for your operating system instead. 
Now, of course, unless you specifically write in support for Linux or OS X programs, you're likely not going to be able to just straight up run them. So bear that one in mind as well. It's certainly a mammoth task to not only write the kernel, not only write the shell, but then also write or compile a lot of programs that you're going to want to use. So a little bit more detail of a couple of things I've touched on. First off, the Linux kernel is what's called a monolithic kernel. So a fairly big, almost cumbersome style kernel, uh, if you believe some people. Um, as opposed to OS X's newer microkernel, so very few files, very few uh, kind of just functions built into it, and then a lot of modularity. Now, what's interesting is that uh, the Linux kernel has actually been updated so that it allows for more kind of modular things like live patching, which means you can actually unmount, update, and remount the Linux kernel on the fly without turning your system off at all, which is kind of crazy considering that if you want to do any level of Windows update, you need to restart the PC about a thousand times and apparently with Windows 10 it will just restart it for you, so that's great. Actually on the note of Windows, the Windows shell is a thing, it's the shell that Windows uses, but it is internally what Microsoft says it is. As I said, with the kernel, it is a closed source thing, so unless you're decompiling the operating system, uh, it is you know just kind of whatever Microsoft says it is, and that's just it. Whereas obviously with Linux, it's open source, so you can play, work, play around with, add or remove features as you fancy, and all that sort of stuff, which is quite nice to see. Now a question you may be thinking about is, why would you even bother writing your own operating system when you have OS? and Windows and actually just Linux in general with how much customizability it has. Well, there are certainly a couple of options and a few companies who will do this for their own hardware, but generally speaking, at least the, the three main ones that I can think of, and feel free to let me know in the comments down below if you have any other you know, suggestions for why you might write your own operating system, but the first one would be for specialized hardware, especially hardware that you've created. If you've got a piece of hardware that you want to do a specific function, you don't necessarily want to put a standard operating system on it, or especially if it's full custom hardware, you might need to write your an operating system as existing ones just straight up won't support your new hardware. Another option would be with very low power hardware that you want to do kind of more high power hardware tasks. So for example, if you've got a uh, you know digital signage PC that can barely run 1080p videos with you know even just a bare bones Linux distro uh, on there, but you want it to be able to do 4K signage, you could write your own operating system to be as efficient as possible and squeeze out a little bit of extra power from that hardware and of course this is a bit of a niche task and uh, you're only really going to do this if you already had a software development team but wanted to save a bit on getting some cheaper hardware uh, and generally speaking this wouldn't be overly recommended but it's potentially an option and on the complete opposite end of that if you have a ridiculously high power system especially you know supercomputer clusters then you may again want to run your own uh, operating system that specifically say only supports the hardware you you've got in it or only supports the certain tasks that you want to do for the most efficient and most optimized kind of process there. Again, uh, you're only going to do that if you already have your own software development team who is capable of writing an operating system, but it is potentially an option if you fancy. So to recap then, if you want to write your own operating system, you're going to need a healthy knowledge of assembly as well as C and potentially a lot of other languages too. You're going to want to write your own kernel and shell and potentially even your own programs and you're probably not going to want to do this unless you have custom hardware or a very specific enterprise solution. So generally speaking, not recommended. Of course, you can go with the, I guess, lighter level stuff of, say, trying to build your own Linux distro, which is more just compiling things and making them work together. Or, you know, even just start modifying, forking and modifying the Linux kernel if you've got a specific use case for it. But otherwise, generally speaking, I think most people will stick with just installing our operating system like normal and using it like a normal person so um, yeah if you have any questions or any thoughts leave them in the comments down below I would love to hear from you especially if you are experienced in this field I would love to learn more myself in general so do let me know in the comments down below I should mention this is not the first tech explained video I've done a number on things like how SSDs work how CPUs and GPUs work and how you'd make your own and why people like Intel and AMD have no competition as well as also how to make your own GPU and stuff like that as well so if you're interested in those videos 
videos, I'll leave the playlist over here for you. If you're new to the channel and want to see more videos like this one, make sure you let me know in the comments and hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos, especially the more research driven ones that do take longer, then you can check out the links in the description. There's merch, there's a, a private internet access, which is a great VPN I personally use. Uh, you can also check out the Amazon and Overclock GK affiliate links, Humble Bundle, and a load of other stuff, so you can check that out. Um, feel free to take a look. And uh, yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.